Oh wow, I haven't done one of these in a while. Oh hello folks, welcome back where I'm the one and the only I am a hobo Tom. And I'm here a little bit um, to catch up on some videos that I missed last week. Um, it's the start, uh, well right now we are in speed week. So yeah, um, that's working at the working at my other jobs and now that scoring is taking place, kind of taking up some of my time. So I do apologize for not getting this video out sooner. I do appreciate all of my followers. Um, I have to make Mr. Azerbaijan. And I'm not sure if I'm doing, I don't know if I feel like doing a St. Patrick's Day thing. I don't know. I'll figure out that day. Well, I'm here to, not to talk about my issues, which are abundant and or legion. But yeah, I'm here to talk about some pro wrestling. So let's start. I have my nice Bullet Club shirt on. Classic Bullet Club. I don't know. I think I have enough wrestling t-shirts for a while. We'll see. There's no such thing as too many wrestling t-shirts. Although I do need another Bike Week t-shirt. That could be helpful. But yeah, I gotta make that list too. Shoot. Stuff to buy for a while. But enough about my, my nonsense. Let's talk about some AEW. 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 As everyone's probably heard by the time this video goes up, Tony Khan bought Ring of Honor. What's he going to do with it? This is going to be weird. I've heard a lot of speculation. If it's going to be Ring of Honor, if they're going to send the good, the really good talent there. If it's going to be AEW developmental. Is it just a video library? Is it this? I have no idea. Um, I don't know. He might even... I know it was, it was based out of, I want to say, Baltimore, Maryland. So I don't know if they're going to move that whole... Th thing to Florida that would be another I don't know they have to start touring again WWE tours AEW tours but Daly's Place is a dump I, I didn't see that one arena I had to work that night oh yeah I did have to work that night um NXT has to start touring again because as I'll meant, or as I mentioned, I think in a previous NXT show, some of those matches they have should not be on TV, but should definitely belong on the house short house show Turk the the Florida circuit, Florida house show circuit, and then what's this? Where did I throw? Where did I put that stuff? Up oh, there it is. Um. Ring of Honor would be another nice show to see. I mean, Ring of Honor could definitely survive on the Florida house show circuit. NXT does. <laughs> so, we'll see how that goes, I guess. On um, the first match of the night. Oh, this was so good. Again, tying back a little bit into Ring of Honor. We have Brian Danielson, the American Dragon. Taking on the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels. Wow, this was good. They did, of course, the traditional handshake. The, again, the, the spirit of honor, wrestling of honor, ring of honor stuff. Uh, very technical start. Both kind of show off their technical abilities. This was fun. I'll tell you what. The rating I'll give to it is it's really no surprise. This was the highlight of the show. Could this have been the main event? Yeah, this definitely could have been the main event. That was some garbage on there. Uh, uh, Brian Dallison does a hammerlock arm bar. Christopher Daniels, the backslide drop kick. And the springboard moonsault. Wow. This was one of the, the best AEW matches I've seen in a while. And I enjoy the Flippy Lucha stuff. So yeah, that's saying a lot. Uh, Brian Danielson with the kicks, the near Muda lock, into the um, bow and arrow. Again, a move that I've always enjoyed doing. They trade chops, Chris Danielson, the blue thunderbomb. 
But you have to know, Christopher Daniels, no one ever wins with a blue thunder bomb. So that was really fun. Um, there was a straight jacket slam by Christopher Daniels. I don't know how that doesn't kill someone because you have like nothing to brace yourself. Then again, they kept on doing the chops, more wrestling and counters to moves. They know each other so well from, again, tying into this whole Ring of Honor thing. T Tony Khan is, is, is a great radio voice. And I'll say that. And great for my videos, but not necessarily for TV. Uh, then Chris Daniels went for the best moonsault counter. Uh, he fell into the triangle choke. Brian Danielson chokes Christopher Daniels out. Uh, holds on a little bit longer than he should probably. Does not adhere to the code of honor. But this, oh my goodness. This was a filet mignon match. And then John Moxley comes out trying to break that stuff up. So yeah. That's what it was. Um, then we had... So that was a very good... <laughs> then we went to the kind of typical... I hate saying this. The typical AEW Schmoz Fest. They had the Tag Team Battle Royal... Or, yeah, might as well have been Tag Team Royal Rumble. Um, if FTR, uh, some, of the, some of the teams here, FTR, Top Flight, Acclaim are so funny. Max Cash is the best. The, uh, uh, first half of the Dark Order, the Butcher, Blade, Bear Country, Varsity Blondes, um, the Super Smash Brothers, the Young Bucks. The Gun Club 2.0 and Red Dragon. Yeah, Red Dragon wasn't this. Yeah. Was that the previous one? No, Red Dragon wasn't. No, no, they weren't. No, Red Dragon. Um, The good parts were really good. Once the ring started to fill up, it just. Man. Uh, top flight, oh, they're 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 gonna be real stars. Top flight, the acclaim mainly because of the speaking ability. The butcher and the blade, the varsity blondes could be good. Super Smash Brothers are done with. Two point uh, I mean they're good. I don't know. I mean Bear Country is the least interesting of all these. Actually, yeah, this is a pretty stacked division. Top Flight's really good. Acclaim with Max Caster is amazing. You could do without all the Dark Order people. Just keep the Super Smash Brothers and make them like menacing again. Butcher and Blade look scary. Farsi Blondes, they have that aura about them. Again, you have the Young Bucks. Uh, the Gun Club, they have all the potential in the Galaxy. 2.0 has always been there. AW just has a stacked ta tag team division. It's kind of a shame that they do all these multi-tag team matches, though. Because the ring just fills up, and then people just kind of either mill about, fall in the corner, or they really, like, highlight one person. Like, I know Tough Flight, they can fly and do all the flippy stuff. Acclaim, come in, oh, bust up everyone. That's so good. And then you have the Butcher, the butcher and the Blade come in. The, the uh, Yeah, the Butcher... Just single-handedly takes out people. Um, I don't know. It, and to do this again, I mean, I'm just happy that the best friends weren't there because because they would have caused a real smosh. Um, you only need one tag team member to survive to win. I mean, that was a far enough match. The Young Bucks. With the help of the Red Dragon, kind of do. Oh, I have to bend more. There we go. Um, they won. Um, you know what? 
it wasn't bad. It, the beginning was good. The end was good. Everything in the middle with all the teams is kind of a hot mess. Um, I'll say a ham sandwich. Another thing a little bit, uh, Colin buys uh, Ring of Honor. But there's no Briscoes, though. We need to see the Briscoes. We need to see them boys. They're the scariest team in the bunch. They just look crazy. I mean, a CM Punk. Promo. He wants to hug it out with MJF. But MJF said, eh, eh, eh. Square kick in the nuts. No, nothing civilized about that. And then he, he busts Punk open. Again, that was that was a really good segment. And you had Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter taking on Mercedes Martinez and Thunder Rosa. Wait a second. I thought Mercedes Martinez and Thunder Rosa hate each other. Oh, and by the way, there are some moments Britt Baker has to invest in a new outfit. I saw her labia. That's good. Um, then what happened? Oh, wow, that's right. Because that tag team battle royal and all this other stuff. I didn't realize there were only four matches. Oh, no, there were five. One shouldn't count. But yeah, it was Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter taking on Mercedes Martinez and Thunder Rosa. It's a little bit of Britt Baker's outer labia. That's always good to see whatever's down there. Yeah, it also means she shaves. I don't know. I don't know if Thunder Rosa shaves everything down there. I don't think Mercedes Martinez would. Jamie Hayter's just a weird British woman. Those Brits are odd. But yeah. Back to focus. Um, for the most part, the brawl starts. Uh, Rosa does the wrecking ball knee drop. That looks great, though. Uh, Brit with a uh, sling blade. A better sling blade than Adam Cole. Baby! We don't see this show, which is... Oh, no, we do. Thought we were going to miss that. Um, a rebel, she starts to interfere. This, of course, distracts Thunder Rosa. Britt gets her kicks in. Rosa has a basement drop kick. There's a lot of offense served by Thunder Rosa. Um, she rocks Jamie Hayter with a stunner. Some of these moves, Thunder Rosa looks a little stiff, or Jamie Hayter doesn't know how to take him. Mercedes Martinez comes in, takes out everyone. Rosa and uh, Britt Baker trade blows. Rosa does the dive. Oh, yeah. You can see the front, the front section of Thunder Rosa's thong. I like it when those pants dip a little, a little bit beneath the Mendoza line. The, the line of demarcation. It goes a little further south. Good stuff, always. Um, Mercedes Martinez takes out Jamie Hayter. Why do I want to say? Thunder Rosa wins. Well, Thunder Rosa and Mer Mercedes Martinez wins. And again, this would set up things. And, and I, I, I saw them win. I'm like, oh, that's not good. It's not a bad match. You know what? Cheeseburger match. Then we had Ty Conti. Oh no, that was. What was that? I'm trying to think, because I saw a little bit of Friday, and I might be getting things goofed up. It was Ty Conti. Was there? Or was Jade Cargill doing a promo with Ty Con Yeah, that's right. Jade Cargill is doing a promo in the ring. Ty Conti shows up. Jade kissed her on the forehead. Wait a second. That's. Oddly arousing. Those Brazilians. They are kind of funky. Although, I will say this. Ty Conti. It's a very, very, very bad idea. To get any man's name tattooed. Underneath your boob. Like. I can see. For women like flowers. Fairies. 
pretty uh, small mermaids, little flower circlets, butterflies, colorful dragonflies, koi fish. I can see a bunch of tattoos um, on women. The only thing that really turns me off when I see tattoos, names, and like if it's a woman, like there was one woman that I was seeing. I think like for like one day and I'm like, nah, this, this is, she wanted to get a flaming skull with the eight ball hat underneath a bottle of Jack Daniels, like tattooed, like on her, on, as a tramp stamp. And I'm like, nah, flaming skulls. No, nah. you're a member of the hell's angels. Flaming skulls works for you. If you're some like random woman who's like a nurse, flaming skulls, nah, don't work. Again, small, cute little things, even like basic, even like if you did a cool geometric design as an anklet, I could understand that. I mean, parrots, koi's, anything non-skeletal and non-flaming. And Jack Daniels just means you're drunk. So yeah, again, as long as it's small and feminine looking, I'm okay with it. I might pay special attention to it too, but that's a whole other issue. Yeah, I have my one tattoo. I am very happy with it, folks. That's all I need. Uh, there was some Sammy Guevara stuff. Then we had a Wardlow. <laughs> then we saw Cesar Bononi. Oh, why is it Cesar Bononi tapping Ty Conti? They both dealt with NXT. Cesar Bononi, you lost out, my friend. You could have had Ty Conti. And that Brazilian booty of hers. But yeah. Uh, it was Wardlow versus Cesar Bononi. And wow. NXT. Like the crowd actually started to chant NXT. 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 Wow. Um, honestly, I think Cesar Bononi got one punch in Wardle, then power bombed him three times. Squash match, ham sandwich match. This time, I think, I think it was this, this one, when Sean Spears tried to get involved and Wardle took the chair from him. Again, that tease of the breakup. That was good. Um, yeah, again, a ham sandwich match. Then we had Hangman Adam Page in the Dark Order. Um, Alex something. Alex Reynolds and John Silver. Wow, I remember their names. Because they were a tag team of Alex and Silver before they, came, before they joined the the failed gang of the Dork Order. Taking on... Wait, what group could this be? The not necessary Bullet Club. I think there's some era that's undis that was undisputed in the NXT. Yeah. Wait, Undisputed Era? That's a, pr that's a pretty cool name. Undisputed Era. Indeed. Yeah. In the form of Adam Cole! Baby. Baby. Baby! Boom! Of course, Red Dragon, Kyle O'Reilly, and the infamous, the infamous Bobby Fish. Um, this was actually a fairly fun match. Page uh, goes after Fish. Uh, Kyle O'Reilly and Silver then becomes Kyle O'Reilly and Silver get back in the ring. I'll tell you what, the Dark Order, say, say what you will, at least Johnny... Silver and Alex Reynolds, they have some tag team continuity. They know, they know, they know spot on what they're doing. Uh, Alex, again, he gets stretched by Kyle O'Reilly. Kyle O'Reilly, he's so awkward when he leaves the ring in any fashion. It's so enjoyable to see. Um, then got down to Adam versus Adam, Page versus Cole, baby, boom, yeah. Um, they kind of trade the headlocks for a little bit. Then all six men get in the ring. 
uh, becomes a spot fest. But this time, when I set up, you know what? I know who won, and I know who's not going to win their title. But Undisputed Era wins this match. Solid match. Cheeseburger match. Of course, this is the basis of some of my predictions, which I'll be showing on my... Try to keep some some timeline continuity going. Because, yeah, I did not do good for any of my predictions. I need to watch more pro wrestling. Get my head on my butt. One of the two. So, yeah. Um, yeah. That was AEW. Let's take a little break. And I'll be right back. There we go. My camera decided to die off. And you know what? I'm just going to leave my Bullet Club shirt on. So we're going to talk about some Bullet Club stuff here anyway. Um, oh, yeah. This is Impact Wrestling, though. Not Bullet Club. So, yeah. The Wednesday, Thursday was kind of weird for me last week. Did I have off those two days? Or I worked early. I worked at my other job, and I got off early. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Thursday kind of sucked. But that's okay. Actually, I'm going to mark off that I got videos done, so at least I'm quasi-caught up. There we go. That's done. That's done. Oh, wow. Look at what happens when I actually get stuff done. That's not too bad. That's pretty good, actually. Um, so, yeah. So, this is Impact Wrestling. Starts off with Eddie Edwards. Obviously, now a member of Honor No More. Very dastardly group. He takes on uh, Eddie Edwards versus Steve Macklin. Um, on the rope. On the top rope. Uh, Macklin gets to the top rope. He, Eddie Edwards somehow. He has great ups. That, that ring is super springy because Eddie Edwards lands his knee all the way up there. Um, Steve Macklin, though, though. Came back a lot. Eddie Edwards, again, he gets frustrated a little bit with what Steve Macklin's able to do. Um, he got stuck in the tree of woe. Steve Macklin just unloads knees, speared him in the tree of woe. That has to hurt because you're not going far. Um, Eddie Edwards is again. I don't know. So after the tree of woe, Eddie Edwards finds Kenny the Kendo Stick. Yeah, it just starts to, to to beat up Steve Macklin with it. Ding, ding, ding. Disqualification. We got to tell the dust to finish, baby. Nobody wins. Or Steve Macklin won. He got he got beat on. He, he, he didn't look like no winner to me. Yeah. Um, you kind of knew something screwy was going to happen. Ham sandwich match. And then Eddie Edwards says, yeah, I was in the Ring of Honor. And then he made a very slight reference to Delirious. Eddie Edwards. Your wife is a piece of ass. Alicia has big boobies. Yeah, Delirious is... Still the, one of the best wrestlers out there. I don't care what people say. He's getting old, but... I mean, he puts talent over. <sighs> to me, he'll always be that... Ring of Honor. He can do the comedy and the serious stuff in the same match at the same time. So, yeah. Oh... Alicia Edwards, big boobas. Oh, I could, I could definitely see Delirious saying that. Yeah, a little reference to Ring of Honor, the old staff, and yeah, just kind of being bitter employee, like all ex employees are, and soon to be ex employees, like this guy, that's outside a shoe store. But yeah, I don't know what that's about. 
because I'm always a good employee, most of the time, sometimes, unless I'm sick and worked already for 12 hours, and it was cold, and it was just a miserable place. I don't know what I'm talking about, but yeah, and then our next match was Heath taking on Vincent, and this guy looks like... One of the Briscoe rejects, because he has the long dreadlock hair. Uh, starts off classic wrestling. Uh, the Ring of Honor, he did the ten punches on top. Everyone can top. Everyone can count that. Um, and he does a, a great, a great neck, neck breaker. I'll say what the one thing people in WWE do learn is how to do an amazing neck breaker. And then stomp, more stomps, stomps, stomp. Uh, he. And kicks him in the like square in the back when he's down. Uh, Ring of Honor come out to try and interfere, but and, and that's not happening because then of course the rest of the Impact people come out. Vincent tried for the Swanton bomb, did not hit that. I don't know what Heath did. Heath did something. He pinned Vincent. Good match. Cheeseburger match. And then Moose, Moose comes out, Moose, from Moose Nation, because he's Moose. Um, he just decided to get on, on with a beatdown, and so he gets pinned by Heath, Rhino does the three counts, not official. Yeah, you, you know who's not winning. That's all I have to say about that. Then we had kind of a squash match. It was Masha Slamovich versus Rachel Rose. Ooh. Oh, I don't care what they say. I have to ask. I'll ask her after being intimate with her someday. Hopefully. But yeah, um, those, those chops women give each other. I don't know. Like, sometimes they land nice and high, so I can see that's like the normal, like, super upper chest. Sometimes they kind of stray down low a little bit. So, yeah, I wonder if that really just stings. I know for men it just stings, but that's just like skin on flesh, like normal stuff. It's not necessarily a sensitive area. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, Rachel Rose got, got her knee in, and that was about it. And then, ouch! Look at that driver in that snowplow. Oh my goodness, the fact that R Rachel Rose was able to get up, that's impressive, because Masha Slamovich won. Typical squash match, building her up. Ham sandwich match. And then we get the G.O.D., the Girls of Destiny promo. Yeah, that's always good to see. Um... Little thing with Ace Austin, Man Man Fulton, and Speedball Mike bailing the back. And and this kind of worried me. Um, Madison Rain versus this is Cassie Lee. Again, one half of the inspiration versus one half of the influence. The I inspiration and the influence. Um, Caleb was told to stand on the X because I guess he's having romantic feelings towards one Billy Kai. The Aussie, the accent, and that bum gets them all. The, gets the men all the time. Then Sheila's have that accent, and that nice, cute, round, firm, tight bum. Yeah. Um, what was I? Oh yeah, Madison Rain just jumps. Poor Cassie Lee again. Miss Spears is getting beat up. Um, <laughs> He just throws her into the corner. This allows Tennille Dashwood to choke her while distracting the referee. I'll tell you what, Madison, Cassie Lee has an amazing, I'm sorry, Madison Rain has an amazing move. No one likes bridging suplex, it's just one of the prettiest moves ever. Um, Cassie Lee comes out with some kicks. Caleb, though, again, Billy got shoved into him. He caught her. Cat, this is a whole distraction. Cassie Lee and, and, and won this. With the, the in, with the in spiral kick or the in spiral 
Like it's just like a spinning suplex. So Cassie Lee won. Um, I should have foreseen that in my predictions for Impact Sacrifice. But yeah, nothing new about that. Now, good match overall, the cheeseburger match. Uh, Jake something cuts a promo. They have Mick, Mickey James come comes out on commentary for the Tasha Seals versus Chelsea Green match. I honestly forgot who won this match. Yeah, Chelsea Green because she gets to challenge. I don't know the winner. Yeah, Tasha Seals gets to take on Mickey James. I don't know. Oh yeah, I saw Chelsea Green's control top pantyhose. I just find it funny. This match itself was actually pretty good. Um, it was Tasha Seals versus Chelsea Green. Uh, Tasha. Where he gets, gets on Green's back. Um, little sits on her, celebrating a little bit on the ropes. That was kind of interesting. Again, just sitting on a person, choking them while celebrating. Different. Um, Chelsea Green hit, eventually hit a Phoenix Sunset flip. Uh, Tasha steals comes back some European uppercuts. That's always good. And then they close lane each other. And ouch. There's always that stomp onto the bottom turnbuckle. I know that I know the turnbuckles, they're like soft as pillows. But still though. Even pillows give, and the only thing underneath that soft, luscious pillow of a turnbuckle cover is one big hunk of tugson steel. I would not want to hit that. Or have someone force my head into that the hard way, even if it is covered by a luxuriously soft pillow. Um, Tasha goes goes off the ropes with the bulldog. Yeah, Tasha steals one, I guess. Then hits the. Fr uh, I think I think Chelsea Green hit the frog splash. I for, I honestly forget who wins. I actually remember I saw Chelsea Green's control top panty. Goes, oh no, Tasha steals one, because Mickey James is complaining. Yeah, so you know what? Still a cheeseburger match, though. The only reason Tasha Seals won is because what's her face interfered. So, yeah, that sounds about right. Johnny Swinger! Oh, Mr. Impact himself, Johnny Swinger. on Jonah. Oh. I don't know. It was just... Ouch. That 300 pounds Samoan drop and the splash. And that was it for Johnny Swinger. Squash match, building up Jonah. Ham sandwich. I dig it. PCO comes out, um, the opponent for Jonah. And they kind of brawl for a little bit. Jonah walks away. Diana Prazzo comes out. Oh, so good. Um, and then Gazelle Shaw's there. I guess she's like the, the glamour woman for Impact. And then Lady Frost says, yeah, I'm not done with you, bitch. Uh, then we had... Bullet, bullet, bullet club. Because they're too sweet for... Life in the form of the machine gun. We have Doc Gallows, the machine gun, Carl Anderson, Jay White, and a member of the finesse club of the Bullet Club, Chris Bay. That was pretty cool. Versus Violent by Designs, Joe Doring, and Diener, along with the Gorillas of Destiny, Golf, Oscar, Delta, because this is the eye in the sky, Golf, Oscar, Delta has landed. Uh, this was fun, it's just bedlam, it's chaos, good brothers, they jump, they jump the Gorillas of Destiny. Just chaos, and then Scott DeMar shows up and says, Yeah, you know what? You guys want to have gang warfare? This is a no-DQ match. Go at it. 
Uh, Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa, they hold the ring, keep everyone out. And of course, you get a baseball bat gets involved. Joe Doring has a trash can. Um, Jay White uses chairs, becomes a spot fest in the ring. The Good Brothers hit some kind of backside. Burn. Oh, the door! Pay brought a door. And the door did not break. That was a good quality storm door. Um, Jay White hit the Blade Runner on Diener. Kind of the way you thought it was going to go after a while. Bullet Club. Because, you know, they're four. Life wins. That was Impact. Again. Oh, and that match itself, you know, it was just gang warfare. It was a ham sandwich. Yeah, that was Impact Wrestling. Two nights of wrestling I actually got to see. That's rare. Um, yeah, Impact I had the pizza for, too. I kind of needed that. So that was right after Lent. Let's see. Let me mark that off of my calendar. That's done. I still have to do that, but that's okay. But yeah, so those are two nights. I'm kind of catching up on my videos. I do apologize for being late. Um, there have not been any live shows here in Florida. Or live shows that I wanted to go to. Daily's place is a dump. I'm never going up there again. Well, maybe I won't say never. But yeah, it's gonna be a while until I want to go back up to Daly's place. I might just wait for them to come back here to Daytona Beach. In fact, I should look up the one center. They haven't. They, there hasn't been a wrestling show here in like a, a year. Roughly. Yeah. Last. Wasn't this this? Was it this December? No. I don't know. It's been a while, though. I should look that up. Um, but yeah, NXT, there is no house show circuit. WWE hasn't been in town a lot. Although I probably will try to get to it when I can. I'll be coming back eventually. Other than that, like the.